I'm in the right place <laughs> because I was just uh, overjoyed with the, the fact that you showed us that there are possibilities of great cinema and good TV shows that are really there. And I think it's, it's common sense when you said that we need to take the time to identify good content from good content. And my thought is, is that we need to learn how to do that. We need to learn how to do that as Catholics, how to identify good content. So part of it is to have these kinds of things like uh, Lux Vida that we can look to. But I think f from, from my point of view, another part of it is to uh, really make an effort to understand that we're not inventing the wheel here, that there has been a lot of great cinema from the silent, the great silent films from the United States and Germany and France. And just having some familiarity with the history of cinema and versing ourselves and some of the great directors, the great American directors, the Japanese masters, and the great European masters, and the great history and Italian cinema, that these are, are, are ways I think that we can approach cinema as a real mode of beauty and to see it. Because I, I, I think, as I, as I tell people often, sometimes I think Catholics have one reaction to cinema and TV, which is, well, and as, as Professor noted, we see all the negative content and we see the destruction of culture. And so our reaction is to put a wall up and to uh, more or less say, well, we're going to separate ourselves from that. Or another reaction is, well, we are just not going to take it very seriously. So then we begin to look at cinema and TV as a, a form of escapism in which there's no depth of, of real human life and experience. Or another problem that the professor pointed out is when we merely look at films as kind of, well, the problem of Christian movies, as you said, I think it's really a terrible problem. <laughs> um, so I really resonated with that as well. So what's the solution? Well, I think part of it is what you presented to us, which is to look for films that are true to life. Uh, you said the heart of stories are the exploration of human life and the, the, the relationships that we find. So I, I think that when we do that, we see that cinema can be a real mode of beauty, a real path towards understanding uh, something very deep about ourselves. And so I, I'm, just, I'm just excited to hear about all these opportunities we have for great cinema. And my thing is also to take you back and to look back and to see a lot of great things that we're not aware of that are, I, I think, highly uh, in harmony with a Catholic worldview. And when we find things that are not maybe as easily uh, adapted to a Catholic worldview, we can still find a lot that has value. So uh, those are just some initial impressions. I don't know if, if I gave too much more than you were asking for there, but... <laughs> Anyway, pass the microphone quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, to echo some of your thoughts, one of the things that struck me about what you were saying was really the, the role of, of education in the formation of a strong Catholic artist. Um, I'm teaching a directing class right now, and in this textbook we're using, we're talking about how um, stage and film directors, how one of the things that makes a good director is having an eclectic openness to a variety of different types of art. And just to echo something that, that you said, I think part of that education is being able to observe or participate in a piece of art, and if you see something that goes against your worldview or the values that you hold, part of that education is to not utterly reject it, but to be able to articulate what is it about this thing that I'm reacting to 
and, and you're able to articulate that through cultivating a broader sense of the humanities. You said communication as well. That communication is key, and it's in engaging with a variety of different types of, of arts and, and film um, that, you know, that, and there's often not a one-to-one -one correspondence. Some films might have some things that very much reflect a Catholic worldview, and at the same time, have other values that don't necessarily reflect a Catholic world. Like the same piece of cinema can do both things at once. The same piece of art can do both things at once. And so the, the sort of education piece of that, um, to open oneself up to engage with a lot of different arts so that you can articulate what is it about this that I'm reacting to positively or negatively. I think that that's so important because even art that's well-meaning can be bad art, <laughs> subjectively. You know, you might experience it as, I don't really react to this, even if it's well-meaning, and vice versa. You might find yourself reacting positively to a piece of art that may not actually reflect your own worldviews. Um, but another piece of that is that I think that there's something, we kind of talked about this over dinner a little bit, that, you know, good art to some extent reflects truth. I think maybe you, you said that. And I think the very act of trying to create something reflects truth as well, um, but just there's the creative act. There's something true about that, whether they hit the mark or not, <laughs> I, I think. But that education piece is what allows us to observe a piece of art and say, I am reacting to it in this way because of this. That's what I have to say. <laughs> This was an honor to, um, to be asked to be on this panel. Um, just even just from the couple hours of being with everyone here, just like realizing how much I have to learn and to grow in. Um, I really appreciated Dr. White and what you just said about there not being a separation and really taking this seriously. Um, and Professor Bowman, what you said about observing and participating um, with my own experience, um, this was a huge tradition. I grew, in a way, like grew up in film. It was a huge education in my life. Um, Dad would propose a movie to us and we'd watch it every Saturday as a family. And then Sunday brunch the next day, we'd discuss it. And he'd always just um, start with the question, what struck you? Um, and my sister was sharing a few weeks ago, like, there was a point when she realized this, this is not a right answer question. Um, but he's asking, like, what is corresponding to your heart? Um, and that he, like, really cared about that. Um, and yeah, it wasn't just like, watch this, like, sit down, watch this, and, like, learn what they're trying to teach you. Um, Yes, because like the asking the questions, I think that has just like what really has interested me in film. And that if someone really creates something from their heart, like they're asking questions too. Um, and like they're then giving that to us. It's like, it's a giving and a participating. Um, that like the art they have made, like they've been asking questions in their lives and it helps us to ask questions in our own, um, to like, yeah, to ask like, what is corresponding to my heart and how can I understand my life, life better? Um, and yeah, and that all of it matters, even if it's a political or personal or cultural story, that all of it matters, we can't um, negate anything. And, yeah, and I think it's, it is just like films have such a deep impact on, on your life. And I think it's, yeah, film has just really been a medium where I can look to, I'm a very visual learner. So when something is presented to me, it is, um, so yeah, how is this corresponding? And how is this making me understand life?
Yeah, I, excuse me. I appreciate everyone's contribution so much. Um, uh, the thing that is striking me is uh, just what Anne said about films asking questions too. And, and then Professor Fumagalli, your description of stories in, in, in film as having a personal connection. And, and, and what occurred to me as, as, as you, you talked about that was how much of a relief it was to me in high school when I was going through my years of angsty teenager high school years and I'd listen to a, a rock music and, and, I, and I'd hear in these, these songs and I'd watch in films like Fight Club <laughs> it's, uh, um, and I'd see the, 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 you know, the, the people had the same questions that I had, they had the same emotions that I had and someone else is out there, you know, there, there's a connection that is made and even if it's over something that's very provisional like a teenage identity, you know, very uh, qualified, you, you grow out of it. Um, it. It is still such a relief uh, to find someone someone is out there that there's there's an engagement. And and I also thought back on on my childhood growing up. My dad would read to me uh, even when I was eight or nine, ten. When I was able to read on my own, he'd read, read to me the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings series, and and how uh, the the stories uh, gave the context for me to understand that my father is a just man. Um, because because these these qualities were taught in these stories, and it's a beautiful thing for me um, to know that about my father. But I knew it in part through stories, not just watching him be just. The stories introduced me uh, to to the, to the virtuous life, to a life that's fulfilled. Um, so they've been very important for me too. I, I want to uh, raise to the to the panel the the, the question that um, I think uh, Nathan, Dr. Bowman, you put out. Um, about uh, engaging the different. Uh, we, we've, we've had a presentation about Christian film, Catholic films, um, but I found this to be very true for me that engaging the different has made me re reframe myself and question myself and challenge myself and has often been positive. How do we do that well? How is that done well? How do we do that that helps us know the Lord and know our faith more deeply? That's a question I put to the panel and to Professor Fumagalli as well. Yep. Uh, oh, thank you for this comment. Um, I would go to to some of, of what we've been uh, we've been said. Uh, well, there is there is uh, absolutely so why there is absolutely a lot lot of content in in all the history of cinema, in the television, etc. For example, I I teach a class of uh, history of cinema. And uh, normally in Italy, we do in every course a general part, so they study or less all the history of cinema, but uh, we do what we call the monographical part. And uh, in last years, I've been doing um, Frank Capra. And for example, there are uh, films like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, that is a film of 1939, that is still so strong, so powerful, so well done, etc., that when the students watch it, they remain. Uh, uh, surprise, surprise, eh? and uh, if you multiply this with uh, I don't know uh, many others that there are by many other authors, by many other writers and directors, it's very interesting. In in this sense, I would uh, encourage you to look at the writers also because uh, there are some writers that have a more consistency. 